Welcome back, fuckers. Alrighty, on today's video, we're going to be running through the Air to Air Radar and F-18 Hornet. Uh, how to set up your weapons, how to set up your uh, radar modes for the weapons, and how to use TWS and RWS. We're going to cover all that stuff in this tutorial. So we are currently paused at the moment, and we're going to run through radar basics, essentially. So you are going to need bound. Let's run through those nice and quickly. So you're going to need your radar switch, operate, and standby. It's always good to have that so you can uh, go nose hot, nose cold. Turn your radar on, turn your radar off to standby. Uh, you're going to need your, not that one, throttle designated controller depress. And you'll also need throttle designated controller up, down, left, and right. Get those bound, or you can do it in your axis commands. All right. Uh, throttle designated controller, horizontal axis, vertical axis. So if you've got the Thrustmaster Warthog POTAS, I use the little uh, the little mini joystick button on the throttle for this, and that is my tune there. So if you've got the same throttle as me, I find this works really nice. So Dead Zone 3, Saturation X100, Saturation Y65, and Curvature is 30. And the only difference on the Y axis, I have inverted the Y axis. So if you don't like how the up and down works on the cursor, this other select inverted or deselect inverted, and it will change your uh, it'll change your your cursor. All right, uh, other controls we're going to need back in. Uh, you will need to have also set uh, select AMRAM, select Sparrow, select Gun, and select Sidewinder. So you need those bound as well because we're going to be using uh, our weapons to set up our weapon radar pages for the appropriate weapons you will also need radar elevation control up and radar elevation control down and uh, what other buttons do i have bound for the radar uh, that one's no, not really a thing all right so we're gonna Quickly, I'll just uh, put ourselves in active pause here just so we don't continue to fly. So this is your radar display. So to get your radar to come up, it's on the uh, the tactical plate. So you just hit the bottom middle push button. You've got support and you've got attack. So we want to go to attack radar. And that's going to bring out your attack radar right now. So you can tell if the radar is on or off because this line here will be moving. It'll be sweeping from left to right and you won't have this cross. Okay, so the cross at the moment indicates that the radar is turned off or is in standby mode at least, and you can also confirm there. Standby at the top left. Other controls as well, I just remembered. Uh, sensing control switch as well, so you need sensing control switch. Um, don't really need to press, but sensor control switch aft, forward, left, and right. Okay, you're gonna need those bound as well. Righto, so to turn your radar on is your radar switch is down next to your uh, right thigh on your radar panel. Okay, so you've got radar, standby, and operate. So when you jump in and you start your aircraft up, just flick it to standby and just leave it like that. And then once you get in the air and you actually start wanting to use your radar, you can flick the radar from standby to operate. Okay, and then if we get up and look up at the MFD, now you can see the radar is sweeping. So our radar is turned on at the moment. All right. So we are currently in navigation mode. All right, you can tell that we're in nav mode or we don't have a master mode selected, we're just in nav because we don't have our master modes air to air or air to ground selected. So we're going to, you don't need to have master arm on for this, but because we spawned in the jet and it is armed, it's all good. So we're gonna select master mode air to air and it defaults us to our aim 9X. So the button again that I'm pressing to change these is your select AMRAM, select Sparrow, select Sidewinder, and select Gun. Okay, so I'm gonna push across and I'm gonna select my AMRAM first. So my AMRAM on our display here, you can see we've got AC number six and visual. So AC is our AIM-120 Charlie and we have six on board. We can confirm on our stores page, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six AMRAMs. AMRAM M120 Charlie's fitted. That is our symbology on the HUD. Now we can tell we're in AMRAM mode. It'll also put up the uh, the big dash circle mode there. 
but you can confirm the the weapons type you've got because it will say AC or AB for AIM-120 Bravo depending on what you've loaded to the aircraft and the number of uh, missiles you have fitted. So the first things first, we're going to go through setting up your uh, your weapons. Again, setting up the radar modes for the weapons and then we'll run through actually employing the radar after that. So the when you select your AMRAM on the stores page, okay, so this is on our stores page. If you've got a FLIR fitted, okay, so you've got your uh, your FLIR pod, either the at FLIR or the lightning pod, if you've got that fitted and it's turned on, when you select air to air mode, um, it will put the FLIR on this page here. Okay, the FLIR will pop up, so you just have to hit the bottom middle button, go to the TAC page, and then reselect stores just to set up initially. Okay, if you haven't done this already before you take off and off the ground, um, I normally do this as of uh, just got wheels up and I'll start setting up my weapons on the uh, fly out to the target area. So you've got size and RCS. So size is telling the missile seeker head the size of the radar signature it's chasing. So if you're going after fighters, okay, you've got small, medium, or large, you can select which one. This is a, a generic, covers every single aim 120 you've got on the aircraft you can't select each individual uh, pylon for this it's just a generic coverage so because you're doing air to air you're most of the time going to be chasing after other fighters uh, that's going to be your prey for most of the time so you're going to select small to medium but if you're going after um you know a, a tanker or a aero refueler sorry tanker and AWACS, something like that or a big uh, cargo plane you select large but for the most part you want size small and then rcs stands for radar cross section and same deal small medium large we're going to select small all right the s mode not entirely sure on what the s mode actually does it's on manual or auto um, i've noticed pretty much no difference in uh, operation of engaging targets with the different modes if anyone knows in the comments exactly what the s mode does uh, feel free to throw them in and explain to us all and so we can all learn together but you can select that to auto or manual okay i always put on auto just because i don't know why i just do and it, and it works for me all right so that is our aim 120s are set up okay we've selected their size their radar cross section and then your s mode is auto and manual now we're going to come across over to our radar display so up the top here we've got on our radar let's quickly run through I'll just pause my uh, track IR so it's not wigging out and hopefully that's zoomed in enough so you guys can see all right so the top here we've got our bar scan all right so you can cycle between one bar scan two bar scan four bar scan and six bar scan so essentially what the bar is is if you think of just going to turn that off so it's not moving getting in our way if you think of um, like a typewriter that'd be the easiest way so you're gonna come across typing your, your letters you get to the end it goes down to the next line okay except with the typewriter it resets back to the start so with the uh, the scan the six bar if you've got a one bar scan it's just going to scan in the one location across the sky it's not going to change the elevation of the radar scan so you're going to scan at pretty much one altitude only Right, so it's very limited for the one bar. If you've got two bar, the radar will scan across to the right and then it will change either up or down and it will scan back. So it's gonna change elevation like so. Okay, that's what your scan is going to do. If you've got four bar, it will do the same. It'll go across, it'll step down, go across, step down, go across, step down, go across, go back to the top. Cross, step down, across, step down, across, step down. So you're covering more chunks of the air in front of you and you can confirm the uh what the radar is doing because this is your radar elevation here this little carrot so if i turn the radar back on we're in six bar right now so as it hits across you can see this arrow is going to change down 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 back to the top and then it'll go start working its way down so that's what it's doing okay it's scanning a piece of uh or an elevation an altitude of airspace in front of you and then once it's done that scan it then steps down and repeats so we got one bar two bar four bar six bar so the uh, obviously the more bars you throw in the longer it's going to take to do a sweep of the area okay because each time it does a sweep it 
it's got to get all the way back across to do it. So for your air to air, your AMRAM, you're generally going to be using four bar scan. Okay, so four bar is what you're going to use for AMRAMs uh, in the Hornet. That's our first part, four bar scan. You've got uh, silence, which you can hit that if you want to silence the radar. Uh, arrays will get rid of any contacts that you've got on the, uh, the radar page. So just say you had a radar contact pop up and you want to get rid of it, you just hit arrays and it will just pretty much wipe the screen and start afresh. We've got our, our weapon type at the top there. So AIM-120 Charlie, six of. We've got our range. Okay, so this is our radar range, 40 nautical miles. So if you look at the number 40, each of these increments is in relation to breaking that 40 up. So we've got our 40 degrees up the top, right at the top of the radar. Then we step back, we've got, oh, sorry, 40 degrees, 40 nautical mile. Next line will be 30 nautical mile. Next line, 20 nautical mile. And then closest line is 10 nautical mile. And we can step that up and down by using the up and down arrows. Okay, so as we bump out, so we go all the way out to 160 and you can get all the way down to five nautical miles and it just breaks it up into increments so you can just kind of use that as your range now with the aim 120 you're not going to be engaging targets anywhere outside of 40 mile okay anything outside of 40 mile you're not even going to be remotely interested in trying to shoot it all right so i leave my aim 120 set to 40 nautical mile scan okay so 40 nautical mile and then you can adjust this as required if you want to scan out further but by default if you're uh, going to be using aim 120s you're going to be firing them you know depending on speed and altitude but in the hornet probably around the you know, 25 nautical miles or closer is going to be a range that you're going to be actually shooting stuff there let's just turn off the uh, radar just so it's not doing stuff um, you've got the set button so this will save all of your settings that we're uh, inputting right now okay so so far we've changed the uh, the the bar scan mode to four bar and we're going to leave this at 40 nautical mile distance and then as we come down we've got our data you can hit that and you can choose what if you want it to display uh, certain things you can declutter you can put your uh you know your attitude aircraft attitude so if you head down you can kind of still see if you're in a dive or if you're climbing if you're in a left hand bank bank or a right hand bank all right you can leave that stuff up or you can turn it off so it's totally gone um, and then the only other one that you're going to be worrying about is for the setup at least is this one here so this is your degrees of sweep so from full left to full right is 140 degrees sweep so if i turn the radar back on you can see we're in 140 degree sweep it's sweeping 140 degrees from the nose of our aircraft to the left to the right so if we hit that it'll go to 20 degree sweep and you can see now it's definitely uh sweetened itself up 20 degrees and then you can go 40 60 80 and back out to 140. so for the amram because we're going to be using TWS track while scan mode we're going to set this to 40 degrees okay because we're going to be using the uh, TDC cursor to designate a spot in the air that we want to look at and we want a quicker refresh rate so we've got more chance of uh, picking up the target last one is your radar PRF I believe is the correct terminology okay so this one here high medium interleave so this is your radar search or how it's going to determine on picking up a radar contact. So we are gonna cover this when we actually go to lock a target up in a second. But for the AIM-120, you're gonna have this generally on high, okay? So high is what you wanna set the AIM-120 to because you're gonna be generally pushing it on targets that are attacking you as well. So set it to high, the AIM-120, and then we're gonna press set to save, okay? And then if we deselect, and then go back, you can see it has saved our settings, four bar, 40 mile, 40 degree sweep, and we're on high PRF. Okay. That is that for the AIM-120. Um, you can set up your AMRAM, uh, sorry, your... Uh... Come on, unpause my tracker. Okay. 
So your your sparrow, you don't really, you're not really going to be carrying a aim seven sparrow at all. Why would you? Unless it's um, been limited to um, like a time period of like to say they've banned amrams in the server, so you can't use amrams. You, you're restricted to sparrows only. So you're on your sparrow page, which is again you select the select sparrow find, select sparrow. Okay, to bring up your aim seven. And you've got size, same settings, small, medium, large. And then mode, you've got loft, normal, or helo. So uh, loft, it'll kind of lob the missile up higher. Normal, it'll fire straight. And then helo is going to go for a, a slower target. Okay, looking for a slower, slow moving target. So generally, normal or loft is going to be what it's at. Um, you can also see on the symbology, we've got 7M and a zero. So aim 7 sparrow and we have none fitted to the aircraft but we can still set up the radar mode if you would want to all right um and i would set it up pretty much the exact same as the it's the aim 120 full bar scan 40 degree sweep and 40 degrees on i okay and then set to save so that's how i'd set up an aim room all right and then the last one we're going to select is our aim one uh, sorry aim nine sidewinder you can tell you're an AIM-9 sidewinder because you get the static of the, the tone of the AIM-9. You can confirm on the HUD, it says 9X or mic, if you've got AIM-9 mic fitted, and then the number of missiles we've got. So we've got two AIM-9Xs on board. So I'm just going to turn down the... So that's how you turn down the static or the tone, if you want, the uh, weapons there. I'm just going to turn that off so we don't get our ears bashed by the static. And we'll just refreeze here and we'll quickly go through setting up the AIM-9. Okay, so for your AIM-9, we're going to be using well, a 6-bar scan because we want to have a a, uh, a more chance of getting If they're Generally, when you're using an AIM-9, you're in close, so they're going to be either diving or climbing. So they're going to be changing elevation quite frequently and you're going to be chasing after them. So we want to try and give our, our radar the biggest chunk of air to search but we're going to counter the six bar by reducing the the uh the sweep again when we're using an aim nine we're not going to be chasing stuff outside of 10 nautical miles so i'm going to set or well, i set mine to 10 nautical mile you could even go as far as putting it to five mile because it essentially an aim nine is a merge weapon so you could set it to five mile i set it to 10 up to you personal preference the mode we're going to put it all the way down to 20 degree sweep Okay, and you can see it's going to be nice and quick there. And again, because remember, when you're using the AIM-9, you're going to be chasing your own visual range. You're going to be looking or pretty much trying to maneuver your aircraft to get behind them. So you're going to be able to see them. So as long as you can kind of point your aircraft in the right direction, you're going to be able to keep their radar signature right in the middle of the sweep. So it doesn't. there's no need for it to be sweeping at 140 when you're in close. You want to actually engage them. And we're going to put this on medium. Okay, medium for the AIM-9 and I'll explain that as well in the next bit. So I'm going to press set to save and that is done. Okay, so that is our weapon modes set. And then as you cycle through, so if I go back to our AIM-120, you can see I've got four bar, 40 mile, 40 degree sweep on high mode. If I go to my AIM-9, I've got six bar, 10 nautical miles, 20 degree sweep and on medium. Okay, and I can just cycle between those as I see fit. All right, so that's that part done. Weapons are configured and radars, radar page. So for each weapon mode, you can configure the radar to suit that that weapon, if that makes sense. All right, so when you're doing air-to-air uh, -air engagement, you don't want to have your stores page up here. You're going to have your, your RWR, is what you want to have on this page, so you can see actual uh, hostile targets, what's locking you, and all the rest of it. And the reason why I have my radar on the right-hand side and my RWR on the left is because of this one here. So your cautions and uh, advisory panel, it puts a solid line. So even though it says advanced bit, comma, B out, that's where it stops, but you can see that black line extends across. You can't really see it there, but it, that it's like a blocked out piece across the entire MFD. And if I bring my radar up on this page, all right, you can see now that black line covers the very base of your radar. And that's a problem because if you switch to aim 
aim nine and you've got it on say five degree, uh, sorry, five nautical mile, this very bottom, actually more so. All right, so that if you've got any cautions here, it kind of chops off the bottom of your radar. And if you're in the merge and they're gonna be, you know, like within, what's that, 10, so eight, six, four, two. If they're, maybe not so much of an example, but it can cover the radar contact, essentially is what I'm saying. Okay, so this cautions, the more cautions you've got, the more chunk this is gonna block of the bottom of your radar. And if I switch back, so you can see there, it's covering the bottom of that, uh, that cross is covered, and we're missing all the dash lines plus a little fraction of the edge. So if I'm gonna put my radar back over this side now, uh, tech radar, now you can see I've got the entire thing fully visible. I don't have that advanced bit B out blocking the bottom of my radar. So that's why I have the radar on this side. Okay, it doesn't get blocked. So if I have a, uh, a pop-up contact pops up and we, I get a, a, a radar contact pops up down here, I potentially wouldn't see it because it's covered, it's behind that caution. So that's why I put my RWR on this page because generally if uh, something's getting shooting at you, it's gonna be flashing and it'll be above the cautions. Okay. All right, so next thing we're gonna talk about is your SA page, all right, your situation awareness page and the difference between the SA page, an SA page contact and a data link contact, uh, sorry, a data link contact, which is on the SA page and an actual radar contact, which is something that your radar sees. So you're gonna confirm that you have got your data link turned on. So on your UFC, you've got the data link D slash L, press that and make sure it says on, one, two, seven, okay? By default, it'll be turned off. So you'll press it and it'll just come up and have ARC, FF1, FF2, VOC A, VOC B, there'll be nothing here. So you gotta press and hold on, data link's turned on. Same with IFF, it'll be off by default. So it'll look like that, one dash zero zero two three C four A. There'll be nothing in here. So you're gonna press and hold on and it should say XP. All right, that's it, data link and INF, IFF is on. Now you are able to get data link contacts from AWACS and friendly fighters from their radars. So we're going to come down to our bottom DDI and we're gonna select our SA page. So you're gonna hit the bottom middle button. So you've got your HSI, which is what it was on. Okay, you're gonna hit the bottom middle button, go to the TAC page and you're gonna select SA. All right, now we're on our situational awareness page. And you can see there we've got a contact floating there. So that contact is an aircraft. All right, we can see it's a friendly because it's a circle. Okay, it's a, a green circle and we've got a little tail sticking out. So that's the direction of travel of that target. So right now that target is kind of flying from our left across our right. Looks like it's gonna turn around and go back the other way. So it's currently coming across our aircraft nose and our aircraft is obviously right there. It's indicated there and we've got our cardinal points on the HS side. So all of your threats are gonna show up. So if I uh, step our, our scale out, okay, so scale, and hit that button, we're out to 160 and 80. All right, so here we go. So we've got some targets, or some targets, some aircraft out in front of us, and we're gonna try and find them with the radar. So this one here, you see how this one looks a little bit different? So that is a an AWACS. Okay, so the big circle with a dot or two dots is indicated as an AWACS or... So if you see that, it's friendly and it's generally the AWACS. These other ones are your other uh, aircraft in the area. So if it's a circle and it's green, it's a friendly. If it's a red uh, diamond, all right, it's an enemy. So we don't have any uh, enemies on this one this uh, quick mission. I just put a couple of friends in so we don't get shot at here. Um, and they are just maneuvering around. So if I put my radar on now, so we're gonna switch to AMRAM and I'm gonna bump up the scale to 80 degrees. So I, again, I can see this here is reflected on my radar page. Remember our aircraft nose is right here. So off the nose, slightly to our right, we've got two aircraft and off the nose, our left we've got another aircraft out there 
All right, and then their range, so we're on the 80, so we've got an aircraft about 60 nautical mile away from us flying cold, and we've also got an aircraft just about almost 40 mile away from us also flying cold, so you can tell the direction of their nose by their little arrow. All right, so if I move my TDC, all right, and to use your radar, you need to get the radar as soy, so you're gonna press sensor control switch right, or if you've got your radar on your left, sensor control switch left, you need to get the diamond on the radar. Once you've got the diamond on the radar, your TDC now controls this guy, all right? So the biggest thing I see people do when they're using the radar, and they struggle with this, is they think that this is a radar contact. They try and lock that up. So that right there is a data link contact. That's just being transposed from our situation awareness page onto our radar just to help you put your cursor in the right spot to lock it up when you actually get the uh, radar looking in the right spot in the air. All right, so a couple of ways you can use the SA page to help you. You can come down here and you can hit step and it's gonna give you information. Every time you hit step, it's gonna cycle between a contact or you can also make your SA page soy by set, uh, selecting sensor control switch aft and you can use your TDC to slew over an aircraft and see what you got. All right, so you can see we've got these guys close enough. I can tell this one is an F-18. All right, it's a uh, call sign is Springfield 1-1, and it is currently uh, bearing 011, 66 nautical mile away from us. I'll move over to this guy. Uh, this one is an A-10. Its call sign is Uzi 1-1, and it is currently bearing 001 and 47 nautical mile from us. And then if we move over to this guy, all right, you can see this is our E2 and Overlord 1-1, bearing range and altitude, which is bra, bearing 313, altitude, uh, range is 70 nautical mile, and the altitude is displayed on the actual cursor. So if I move this down to this guy. All right, so airspeed is on the left, 0 0.6, and that is in Mac. So this A10 is doing 0 0.6 Mac, and the angels or altitude in thousands of feet is on the right. So angels 19, this guy's at 19,000 feet. If I move over to our friendly F-18 Hornet there, he's doing 0.7 Mac and he is at 15,000 feet. Okay, or angels 15. Go over to our AWACS. AWACS is doing 0.4 Mac and is at angels 30. Okay, so we can use this information to help us get the radar in the right spot. So we're gonna come over to the radar. I've made it uh, soy again. All right, sensor control switch right. And we're gonna have a look at our radar elevation here. So the numbers on the top and the bottom is in thousands of feet, the chunk of air that the radar is looking at. So at the very top of my radar sweep, it's looking at 52,000 feet. And at the bottom of my radar sweep, it's looking at 18,000 feet. So uh, if this was a looking straight out of the aircraft our air our radar is looking up at 52,000 feet and down at 18,000 so there's a chunk of air okay a chunk of sky that we're scanning between the button you're going to use again is your radar elevation control up radar elevation control down and it's pretty straightforward you press radar elevation control up it adjusts the number okay so now we're looking at angel 65 and angels 31 if i adjust it down it goes down to looking at 12,000 feet and then it's looking minus 22,000 feet through the earth, okay? It's obviously not gonna see through the earth, so it's looking at 12,000 to the ground. And that is how you can adjust your radar elevation to suit the target. Now, really cool thing with a Hornet radar, I'm just gonna quickly freeze my track IR again so it doesn't wig out, give you guys seizures. I can put the cursor over the top of the uh, the data link contact and it's gonna give me the same information I could have got off the SA page. So I can see this guy's doing 0.4 Mac, he's at Angels 30 and I can see his azimuth, right, his direction to travel in relation to my aircraft. And that's gonna help you decide a couple of things when we go to lock him up with the, with the radar. All right, so we're gonna try and find this guy the A10. We're going to try and find him. So again, the further out you are, the less chance you've got of actually picking up a target because the radar is going to struggle a lot more to find it. So we might have to just uh, push in. So I'm just going to unfreeze, take active pause off. 
make sure we're uh, we're still in autopilot mode, which we are. Lovely. All right. So we're going to try and pick up this guy. So now we're going to talk about the modes. So remember at the start, I was talking about high, medium, and high, medium interleave. So when a target, okay, a radar contact, is flying hot, okay, if, you, if they're hot on you, it means they're flying at you. Their nose is pointing at you. They're flying straight at you or in a direction towards you. Okay, they're coming at you. They're not flying away. So that's a hot aircraft hot if they're flying away from you like this guy up here all right he's actually nose away he would be a cold contact okay uh cold is what you're after and then if they're flying straight across you they're gen you're generally going to get a call flanking okay and if it's the awax ai awax they'll just say flanking they won't give you direction if it's a uh, an actual player that's doing gci using um lot atc or whatever they're going to say flanking and then they'll give you direction you know flanking right to left all right so when you do a uh, an AWACS call for this guy for example if uh, AWACS they're not going to call it out because it's a friendly but your call would be um, contact bearing okay so this is your bearing from the your aircraft to them as well all right displays that off the SA page as well so you contact your AWACS call would be uh, bra 343 52 and then it would be flanking because he's flying across us from our left to right okay he's flying from our right side to our left he's heading in that direction so we're going to try and find this guy now and we're going to switch to tws okay so at the moment we're in range while scan we're going to switch to track while scan and when you're using aim 120 you want to have track while scan all right otherwise you're just going to give yourself away and you're going to lock targets up um and give them indication that you're actually locking them. So track well scan lets you lock a target. Okay, soft lock a target is the easiest way to describe it. So you're locking the target up, but they don't actually know that you're locking them with your radar. They won't get an, they, their RWR in the jet won't be going off. Okay, when you, and I'm sure you've heard it, when someone locks you up, this thing starts beeping at you and you have like a 29, right? Something, something starts locking you up and you hear the RWR, RWR going, and it just goes off its tits because something's locking you all right what you're doing in tws when you lock them they don't get the rwr indication so if they're not paying attention you can effectively shoot at them and they don't know what's coming all right which is where tws mode is super super cool so we're going to be in tws mode for this and we've got auto and manual and we'll discuss that in a second and we've got medium high and medium uh, high interleave so going off what we know now let's get this guy so i'm just going to active pause again just so we don't get any closer so i know this guy is doing 0 0.6 mac he's an angels 20 and he is hot on us so when a target is hot on you let's move this over here out of the way so we don't pick him up you want to select your prf your mode is going to be high okay so aircraft that are flying or contacts that are coming at your aircraft your best chance to pick them up will be in the high setting. If they're flying across from left to right or flying away from you, your best mode is gonna be medium setting. So easy way to remember it, if they're coming at you, if they're flying straight at you, put it in high. And if they're flying across or away from you, put it in medium. So if you're having trouble, pick up a target, um, just double check your PRF mode. And then you've got the, the happy medium, which is high, medium, interleave. So it switches between the two types on each, each cycle. Right, so we're going to because this guy's hot, we're going to put it on high and we're going to move the mouse, uh, the cursor over the area. So you can see here the radar isn't following my cursor. So, what you can do to make it follow, there's a couple of things you can do. You can press and hold TDC to press, press and hold and release, and it will go to spot mode. And then, when I move my cursor, the TDC are the uh, when I move my TDC cursor. You can see the radar is following my cursor. Okay, it's following the TDC. It's following it along as I go through. All right. To get out of that, you just press TDC to press, and it'll reset it back to now. So if I want my radar, rather than doing that, if I want my radar to stop looking over here and wants to look here, all I do is just press TDC to press once, and it's going to 
tell my radar to slew over and then look in our 40 degree sweep of where my TDC cursor is. All right, so if I wanted to look at the AWACS over here, I move my TDC, I press TDC to press, and then the radar follows it across. Okay? Now, this guy's at Angels 19. So my radar elevation is currently at 23. So if I slew my radar up, okay, I'm in high mode, and I go to find him now. So he is um, in my radar. I've got the right direction. Okay, he's in high because he's flying at me. I've got it in high. I've got my TDC over him. My radar's searching over the top of him, but I don't have him on radar. Okay, because a lot of people, will, this is where they stuff up. They've done all the right things, but their radar elevation is not looking at it. So we remember, we're looking at 61,000 feet. That's the bottom of our radar right now. It's looking at 61,000 feet. So this guy's at 20. He's way under. Our radar's looking over his head. So we need to slew the radar elevation. It's going to drop the radar elevation down. Just tapping that radar elevation down until we get to... And there we go. So if I just pause that now, just so we don't lose it. You can see now we've got some uh, some symbology change. I'll just freeze my track wire. So now we've got that little dash, that little brick has popped up. And we've also got these two lines here on... Uh, I'm just going to just zoom out a touch, unpause, and we'll just go to that. Just sw uh, change the elevation, uh, the range to 40. Okay, so I've got some symbology here got the little dash and then it's changed to a underscore or, or a, uh, like an under semicircle with a line on top and we've got a number one so as soon as you get the brick or you get like a number one or a number two or a number three in the actual elevation sweep of your radar that is a radar contact if it just looks like that it is a data link contact you can't lock it your radar is not looking in the right spot it's not at the right elevation it's not in the right prf mode you need to fix that to get this thing to pop up okay so now if we unpause as we move over okay you can see he is doing for some reason 0.1 mac at angels 20. okay and then to lock him up you just press tdc to press once and now you can see there we've got him locked and he's doing 0.1 Mac, probably because he's got his jammer on and it's fucking shit up for us. And uh, he's doing 20 degrees, uh, Angel's 20, cruising through. Now, as he gets closer, all right, so you can see our elevation as we get closer to our own aircraft, the elevation changes based on the closer we get. So right here, we should lose this contact because he's now our cursor is slewing i was looking at angels 20 and he's at angels 19 as i move the cursor back closer to me you can see the altitude increase because we're dipping our nose of the radar down towards the ground so it's a continuous slide the further i go out you can see my elevation is changing just by how close i'm making the or how much tilt i'm putting on the radar essentially so how do you make this follow him so that uh, it doesn't lose lock, right? Because otherwise you've got to constantly be slewing your radar elevation to keep him in it, all right? And do that. So there's a couple ways. You can do it manually, which means if he's maneuvering, so just say he's like, holy shit, he's noticed you and he starts flying and trying to put you in the notch. Uh, you've got to manually follow him with the, the cursor while you're doing maneuvers yourself. And you've got to manage the altitude, which is not the smartest thing to be doing. So the quick and easy way, we're going to go back up to this guy now. And we're going to try and get this guy because he's turning around. He's too close. We'll try and get this guy. So again, we're going to adjust our radar elevation. So we are at the correct altitude. So between 17,000 and the ground. And he's flying across us. Remember, our mode is in high. So we're looking for aircraft that are flying towards us. We're going to switch it to medium and see if we have any luck picking him up here. So it's not going to be perfect. All right. But medium is our best chance to actually get this guy on radar. So we're doing all the right things here. And we're just struggling because he's essentially in the notch to us. So the notch on a radar 
um, not to radar, you want to be flying perpendicular to the radar. So if they're flying directly perpendicular to your aircraft nose, your radar is going to really struggle to find them, okay? Because they're essentially invisible. And that's if you've heard people say um, in multiplayer servers or in videos, uh, put them on the notch. It means fly your aircraft perpendicular to their aircraft. So you want to fly straight across their nose, dead straight, and their radar is going to struggle. So let's move back to this guy. Now he's flying cold. So we'll slew our radar down. 19 and there we go so we've got this guy because he's not in the notch we're in medium mode we switch back to high it's probably still going to get him because he's close but if he was further away we'd struggle a little bit more with him okay so we've got this guy let's lock him up tdc to press once easiest way to do it is to press auto so you've got manual mode auto mode you press auto mode and it's automatically going to adjust the radar elevation and it's going to follow him the radar is going to follow him to the best of its ability. So as he starts cruising across our, our nose here, the radar is going to continually follow him across and it's going to adjust the radar elevation to hold the lock on this guy. If it does drop lock, you need to unselect auto because at the moment in auto mode, I can't adjust my radar elevation. I'm hitting radar elevation up and down. I can't adjust it. So if I come out of manual, just get him to go over here so if i put this in auto mode now so we're simulating we've essentially dropped lock okay we lost lock for some reason it's lost him and we're trying to get him to go back over here so now i'm pressing don't, don't go by us okay i'm pressing t uh, elevation up and down oh it's letting me All right make a liar of me i could run manual mode fuck's sake yeah let's move that up there Go in auto mode again. All right, so now, there we go, that's where. So I'm hitting radar elevation up and down, and it's not letting me change. So you can see my elevation stuck at 41 and 28. So if you if it does drop lock for whatever reason, you need to come out of auto mode, back to manual, if he has changed out of the elevation limits, and then re-slew, re-elevation, uh, reset your radar elevation to his correct uh, thing, and then lock him up again, and then you can hit auto mode again on there so i've got the uh right mdi push button 13 which is the button that corresponds to auto mode manual mode on the um the right hand mfd i've got it set to a key bind or a uh, a hotas bind so i can hit my bind on my joystick and it's going to cycle it from auto to manual automatically so i don't have to if i'm flying i don't have to worry about coming down and like oh i gotta hit gotta get my mouse quickly and put put oh shit i've hit the wrong button all right just makes it easier you can just cycle between okay so let's put it back on him there because he's flying away from us now he's going to struggle to pick him up but it's all good okay so medium mode when they're flying away and obviously going to be a lot harder to find them medium mode but if you're having dramas just cycle between the modes high and medium and just keep it in the right spot and once it gets a lock as long as you've met all the right conditions so you're scanning the right chunk of air all right between angels 25 and angels 4 so we've got him he's at angels 19 i've got my radar slewed and uh scanning the right piece of air where he is and i've got my prf in the correct mode you just have to wait for a radar lock and the further away they are the less accurate the radar becomes. Okay, it's not God mode. You can't. Uh, it's not accurate out to 80 nautical mile like it used to be in early access. Okay, the closer you get, the more chance your radar's got of finding a contact, getting it done. All right. So I hope that made sense to you guys. So covering the things we just went over one more time. Just move this over here, and we'll turn it off. All right, so to go through again, when a target is flying towards you, you want to have your PRF mode to high, okay, on high. They're flying at you. You're going to have the best chance of getting them. When you are dealing with the target that's flying across or away from you, you want your radar set to medium, okay? It's a lot harder for your radar 
to get a lock or keep a lock on a target that's flying across or away from you as it is to a target that is flying at you. Your radar sees the target, uh, the radar signature a lot easier from objects coming towards you, all right? Especially nose on, dead straight at you, they're gonna, that's the best chance your radar's got. When they start maneuvering right to left or left to right, that's where your radar starts to run into dramas. And if they get a perfect perpendicular flight path across your nose, your radar will lose lock, okay? It's called being notched. And that's the same deal. You can do that to a missile as well. If you can notch a missile, the missile loses its lock on you because it can't see you anymore and it goes stupid. Okay. Uh, your manual and automatic modes. Okay, manual is to let you adjust the radar elevation to suit the target that you need. And automatic, once you've got the target locked, so you put it in see if we can get this guy. I doubt we will because they're a little bit a ways away. Okay, once you've got lock and you've uh, hit them, locked, locked them up once, you're then going to switch to auto mode to hold that lock. Okay, and then that lets you not have to worry so much about while you're uh, maneuvering your aircraft. So if I unpause here. Okay, so you're maneuvering your aircraft. You've got them locked up. You can see as I start banking, my TDC cursor, if I'm not in auto mode, I need to be flying and then have one eye down looking at the radar, keeping my cursor at the correct radar elevation and keeping it in the right spot. It just makes it a lot harder. Okay, so just by putting it to auto mode, does the hard part for you and it keeps a lot. But you just got to keep an eye on and make sure that your lock stays on. If the lock does drop, you need to switch from auto mode back to manual reacquire the target reacquire the lock once you've got them locked then you switch back to auto mode again okay so that is the aim 120 and radar kind of uh explained for you next one would be why did we set our and we don't want to be in a tws mode for the aim 9 why did we set our aim 9 to medium because generally when you're chasing or when you're in a dogfight, they're gonna be flying across, up, down, they're gonna be maneuvering on you. So by putting your radar in medium mode, your radar, you're giving your radar a better chance because they're gonna be, if you're chasing them, they're gonna be flying away from you or across you. So your radar is gonna have a better chance of locking them up uh, when they are maneuvering target in medium. Okay, but Again, with the uh, the AIM-9, you're generally going to be within visual range, so you're going to see them, and you're going to be able to put your uh, AIM-9 on the mark. But for whatever reason, if you uh, you didn't, what I like to do is if I know that there's a target somewhere around, I just get my radar elevation roughly slewed. So say there was a target uh, within 10 nautical mile of us um, at Angels 27, for example. Okay, so he's, he's at the... The eight mile mark he's at angels 27 but i don't know where he is i can just press um sensor select right again once and it'll go to auto acquisition mode and then all i would be doing would be just pulling my aircraft from left to right right to left and i'm just sweeping that area okay sweeping left right left right and as soon as a radar contact gets discovered my radar will automatically lock them up in aim nine mode Okay, but you've got to be in range while scan mode for the AIM-9. Okay. Um, last thing to cover, if you are using your... Oh, damn it, the wrong button there. Okay, your... Your sparrows. Sparrows work off range while scan only. You can't use track while scan. You need a full lock. So with a sparrow, you have to fully lock the contact up. So let's uh, head back over. See if we can get this guy here. All right, so we've got him locked up. You have to keep a full lock on the contact to fire your AIM-7. So benefits or not so much benefits of an AIM-7 is you're going to give away your position. You. This guy here is getting a radar lock from me. His RWR will be beeping at him saying that an F-18 is locking him up and I can't fire an AIM-7 
unless I've got a solid actual STT lock, okay, solid track on him. Whereas in my AIM 120 mode, I've got him locked up. So he's in TWS mode, he's locked. I switched to auto there. So I've got him locked. I can fire my AIM 120 at him and it will track, but he's not getting the RWR indication. Okay, he doesn't know I've got him locked anymore. He doesn't know that. So if I fired at him, the only time he would get a warning would be once our missile goes active. So as soon as you fire a missile, it will, this countdown timer, okay, seconds to active. As soon as that counts to zero, then his RWR would go off because he'd get the AMRAM, okay, the seeker head in the AMRAM would be turned on, activated, and it would be actually chasing him. So he'd get a missile launch from a, a missile coming at him that's the first time he'd know that he'd be fired at. So TBLS mode, I'm sure you've been shot down by a Viper at some point in the Hornet, and it just came from out of nowhere. You're flying along fat, dumb, and happy, and then all of a sudden your RWI goes off with a, uh, a missile shot, and then you're dead. It's because they use TWS mode. Okay, they shot at you. You didn't know they shot at them. You didn't know that they shot at you, sorry. And then by the time the missile gets within range to activate its seeker head, you're pretty much screwed and you can't really evade it depending on how fast the missile was when they shot it. Oh, man, what a mouthful. Anyways, guys, I hope that kind of cleared up some of the myths on the radar. It is a really good radar in the F-18. You just got to know how to use it um, and just practice cycling. Okay, cycling your binds. I've also got, uh, for ease of cycling my modes, I've got the right MDI push button one to cycle between my modes real quick so again because if you're going to be uh, engaging maneuvering targets you're going to be able to cycle this real quick rather than if you're flying like oh shit they've gone cold i've got to come down here and ah oh, fuck uh. all right you start staggering so bind the push button right mdi push button one bind the uh, auto manual mode right mdi push button 13 and then i've bound the scale right mdi push button 11 and push button 12 i've bound those as well to my hotas so i can adjust the radar uh, scale out. I can change the mode of the radar PRF and I can change from manual to auto all of my HOTAS and I don't have to worry about doing any of that other stuff by clicking on buttons while I'm trying to fight someone. Lovely. Awesome. So if you enjoyed the video guys, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. If you've got any questions, queries or comments, uh, throw them in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, if anyone knows what the uh, the auto mode in the AIM-120, okay, the auto and manual S mode is in the 120, if you guys know what that actually does, uh, throw it in there. I'd love to hear it because I've found really no difference between auto and manual mode when I've been using I've tried both. I don't know. Don't know what it does. Um, it works in both modes, but um, it's obviously there for a reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, and lastly but not least, if you haven't hit the subscribe uh, subscribe button, uh, go ahead and hit the big old red subscribe button down there. Helps the channel out a bunch. Uh, we're cracking on on our way up towards 4,000 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. So thank you everyone that has subscribed. And if you just hit the old subscribe button right now, thank you very much, you legend. Appreciate your support. And obviously everyone that has subscribed, thank you guys for continuing to stay subscribed and hope you enjoy the content. Anyways, guys, that'll do us for today, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.